recollection of the Buddha is one of the guardian meditations. What does it guard you from? It guards you from your own defilements. It's good to stop and think about the Buddha, because he sets the pattern for what we're doing here, for our practice. And you look around the world to see who you might want to take as an example, and you can't find a better one. As you reflect on the Buddha, it gives rise to the conviction, which is one of the inner strengths that keeps you on the practice, keeps you going. It gives you also a sense of direction. You know, we're not just trusting in the Buddha, we're trusting in his awakening, that he really was awakened, he knew what he was doing. He really was able to find a deathless element inside that led to true peace, true happiness, and an end of suffering. And as a teacher, he was very wise. He knew which issues to take up, which issues to put aside, how to frame issues so that they would actually be helpful in leading to the end of suffering. Because there are so many issues you can get involved in, so many debates, so many lines of thinking, lines of exploration you can follow that pull you away from the main issue, which is the end of suffering. And even with issues that are related to the end of suffering, you can frame them in ways that pull you away. So he's wise not only in what he taught, but also what he didn't teach, how he framed what he taught. And John Sawad used to say, if you don't believe anybody else, if you don't trust anybody else, at least trust the Buddha. Place yourself in his hands, you put yourself in good hands. You follow what he taught, and you can't go wrong. So it's good to contemplate this on a regular basis. There are a lot of people who say, well, the Buddha was okay for his time and place. But now we live in a modern world. We have certain assumptions that we have to take as being part of being modern people. I never knew that I had checked in under those conditions and I had to accept a modern worldview. One of the facts of the modern world is that we're exposed to lots of different teachings, and so we have the right to choose our assumptions. What we're going to assume is a well-lived life, what we're going to assume is a is a good example for how we live. So we have the choice. And there's nothing that commits us to a otherwise modern worldview. And so there's no need to say, well, we have to strip away the Buddha's teachings the same way you might pluck a chicken, leaving only the parts that fit in to a modern worldview. After all, after all, the modern worldview is one that's creating a lot of suffering for us as it is. If you believe that all you are is a body and your consciousness is just kind of an epiphenomenon, as they call it, a side effect of having a body, then you can't really believe that by training the mind you're going to have any impact on anything at all, because the reality is the physical reality, they say. But if you believe that the physical reality is the only one, it makes you miserable. What can you do? You're stuck. And some people like to be stuck, but it's a miserable place to be stuck. And just look at your mind. I mean, what is your mind dealing? It deals with, with meanings. Someone can say a word and it will have a huge impact on what goes on in your mind. Now the word itself, physically, is what? Sound waves hitting the ear. That's it. And we can take the same word, and so the sound waves are the same, but you put it in one language and it means one thing, and you put it in another one and it means something else. And if everything were just physical, how, how could that be? The mind deals with meanings. And so take the meaning of what the Buddha said. 
then it is possible to find a true happiness. And it's possible to do it from within, in other words, by changing your mind with your mind. Now that doesn't fit in with a lot of modern assumptions, but again, why are we committed to, say, a materialist assumption just because we're born in this time and place? We have the right to choose any assumptions that help alleviate suffering now and on into the future. And so the Buddha's assumptions are really wise. And as for parts of the, the teaching that people would have us put aside, the Buddha had good reasons for teaching them. The whole issue of the different levels of being. I have a student who started meditating on his own when he was a teenager. And he started sensing beings around him. Now, having been raised in the Catholic Church, you know, these spiritual beings could either be really good or really bad, and there's nothing in between. And they certainly didn't look like the good ones, and so he was really flipped out. So he stopped meditating. Later, when he realized that there are other ways of looking at these beings, there are all kinds of beings out there. And the Buddha gives you instructions on how to deal with them, how not to be overcome by them, not how to be afraid of them, how to be wary around them. But I wish them well. How to protect yourself from them. These are all there in the teaching. And the worldview that he gives is very useful. Because then it's not a matter of either angels or demons, it's just like having lots of different kinds of neighbors in the same way you'd have in the human realm. So that worldview can be very useful and extremely useful for people who are sensitive in that way. So when we recollect the Buddha, this is our protection. It's like, a lot of things we don't know in life. And we have our choice of assumptions, and the Buddhist teachings make sense. He's not asking you to believe anything impossible. He is asking you to believe in the power of your own action. And he's also giving guidance, so you don't have to reinvent the Dharma wheel every time you start practicing. So this recollection of the Buddha is a good protection. It protects us from that idea of this as well. If I don't know something, I'm not going to believe it. Well, there are a lot of things that you don't know. If you have to you start examining your beliefs, you realize that you make a lot of assumptions as you go through the day. So you might as well adopt some assumptions that have been tried and passed the test. You know, the people who say that the Buddha is really worth listening to, they're all, they themselves are people who are very impressive. Again, it was a John Sawat who said, if you don't believe anybody, believe the Buddha. He himself had believed the Buddha all the way down the line, and he benefited greatly from it. And he was a very inspiring example, much more inspiring than the people who would say, well, pick and choose and take what you like and don't take what you don't like. This is a way we protect ourselves from ourselves protect the good part inside us, the, the part that wants to find a true happiness, and protect it from all the greed and aversion and delusion and laziness and other unskillful qualities that would pull us away. So this is one of the most important weapons in our arsenal. So bring it out to use on a regular basis, and it will, you'll find it gives energy and safety to your practice.